delighted to be here to talk to you about micro front ends. And I hope you take something out of this talk on powering up micro front ends at the edge. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. I am Gift Iguinu. I work as a developer at Cloudflare. Um, like Flo already said, I am very active in the community, and that has led to me being awarded a few um, community programs, ambassadorship, whatever that is. <laughs> All right, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this meme. Are you, Hans? Okay, oh, okay. So I have to do justice next, trying to like, make, make it make sense. So let's all imagine everybody here is that guy, and you are sitting in a room filled with fire. Of course, the thing you, you would possibly do, human instinct, is to run, right? But no, you just sit there, and you're sipping your coffee, and you say, everything is fine. It's all good. So let's imagine um, that this scenario is how developers that are working with monolith applications, especially in large scale um, platforms, currently feel because working in a monolith application can often times be difficult to scale, maintain, and trying to keep up with all the latest changes in the industry, feature requests that comes in could be very, you know, difficult to work with. So the developers are just there sitting you know, trying to continue working on the code and exclaiming, this is all fine, it's fine. Meanwhile, it's a pain deep down. Um, next to that, I would like to talk through a life circle of monolith front ends. But if anyone here is not familiar with the term, monolith application is essentially an application that is built as a single unit. All the front end, back end, databases are all um, in one application. Right, and you typically have a team working on that. So that's how it all started. Moving from that, people decided that it would be nice for us to just split our teams into front end and back end, right? And then microservices came where everybody felt like it's nice for us to split up the back end logic into specific functionalities and have like specific teams working on that. So essentially microservices are your backend logic that are split into different services according to the specific features that are you know, dedicated to it. But the problem still remains that the front end part of the code is still a single unit and that essentially is still a challenge. Um, one of the biggest challenge that comes from that is that the front end application becomes slow and also have like a very bad user experience. And when you think about this, think of like applications like maybe eBay.com. These are like large enterprise applications that if you have one single front end for that, it could be very taxing and daunting to work with. Another challenge of a front end monolith is you have increased technical depth. Of course, with large applications like that, over time you are incurring techni technical debt, and it also, it's also very difficult to scale and maintain those type of applications. And lastly, it takes a lot of time to actually have st stuff shipped, right? So you have long development circles due to the complexity of the application. And that's where micro front ends come into the picture. So micro front ends to the rescue. The front end community decided that I, Microservices are good for the backend folks. I think it's time for us to also adopt it. So essentially what micro front ends is, is um, your front end application splits into smaller um, independent components that are shipped and isolated. So yeah, micro front end aims to break down your web applications into smaller independent um, components that you can deploy and um, use even specific technology stacks so you can have a micro front end that is React, another that is Vue, and they all are uh, um, pieced together, right? So instead of what we had before, we now have something similar to a vertical team where instead of having a front end, back end team, or if you're using microservices, instead of having a back end team split up and then one singular front end team, what you see in common you know, organizations that utilize micro front ends is you have separate um, teams that are working on specific functionality. So in this example, if you're working on an e-commerce application, you probably have a team that their work is focused on, you know, shipping the checkout system of the application. So you have a front end, back end, sometimes a DevOps engineer 
on that team. Uh, you also have like someone dedicated or a group of people de dedicated to making sure that the search works on the platform. So this is all great. And I feel like here, yeah, this is where a lot of development teams are moving towards. I'm going to be showing a demo, one of, one of which is this cloud gallery. Essentially, it's an example application that has micro front ends implemented on the server side. Each of the micro front end is self-isolated. They are deployed individually. The, the, the good thing here is once you have your application split up, you can have like specific teams that are focused on building that out. And then overall, the, the problem here of having like a large application being difficult to manage is solved. But yeah, when you, when you have your front end, micro front end um, deployed as a client side application, it is great, it's all good, but it also comes with its own challenges. One of which is with everything on the client side, you're always going to be fetching JavaScript um, files and oftentimes that leads to slow performance and also slow page builds. It's also very impossible to tree shake some unused libraries when you have a like mixture of different um, fragments or different components all pieced together on the client side. Finally, my, if in your experience, if you've done anything on the client side, maybe like a typical Vue.js app, hydration or server-side rendering is quite difficult to accomplish there. So that's why I'm here and excited to be sharing with you how to actually do micro front ends on the server side using Cloudflare workers. So the web experiences team at Cloudflare actually worked on these um, demos and I guess I'm going to be sharing with you. And they've like done so much work to enable this be a thing that you can actually do on the server side. So if you're not familiar with Cloudflare Workers, Cloudflare Workers is essentially a compute platform that allows you to deploy high scalable application on the edge using like different of the different um, points of presence that we have across the globe. So you have like typical JavaScript functions that are shipped and then accessible to your users wherever they are located. This example here is an example Cloudflare Workers script. It's written in JavaScript. It has a simple, um, essentially what it's doing is returning a JSON response about this conference to the browser. You can see there that I have an export default function and in there I'm using the fetch request to get some data and then return that to the browser. That is a typical syntax for writing the Cloudflare workers, right? But I'd like to show you a bit more um, examples of what you can actually do with workers and also using that to build a, a micro front end. So yeah, um, for the demo that I'm going to be showing you, if you want to try it out while I'm showing you, you can quickly scan that QR code before I move on to the next slide. You can play with it on your phone or on your laptop. It's, it's pretty nice. Okay, let's move on. So yeah, the idea to actually get your micro front ends to the server side, we call, we call it the fragment architecture, right? So looking at this diagram here, you have a parent fragment and then individual child fragments. Using the example demo that I will show you in a bit, you have separate um, fragments that are actually independently deployed workers. So imagine that you have a uh, main application, right? And in there you have several different components, the header, the body, the footer. Each of them are actually deployed workers that live independently and isolated from each other but they are all pieced together um, using the main fragments and then streamed to the browser. You don't essentially know it, like if you're already playing with that app, you, you won't notice that there are um, separate applications in um, real time unless you're told or unless you um, are here and I'm telling you that, right? What's even more interesting is how you can actually go on to break up the fragments so you can have a nested fragment within an actual worker, right? So for example, the body has two different fragments, a filter and a gallery within that. All of these are isolated. They work on their own. You can also piece them together to form an application. So how does this work? How, did, how were we able to put this together? So um, the syntax that I showed you before was a singular um, 
uh, Cloudflare worker scripts. Now, Cloudflare workers allows you to deploy your application using different um, frameworks. You can use JavaScript TypeScript. For this example, it's using JavaScript, and each of the components are actually deployed. In, they are actually deployed um, workers. So you have like the main parent fragment, which is there in a separate directory. You have the body, the filter, everything are living like isolated from each other. But how are you? How are you able to actually get them to interact with each other? So we're able to do this using something called service bindings, right? So service bindings are a much faster way to get a worker to talk to another worker. And you do this using like configuration in your Wrangler um, configuration file, which is something that you, a CLI tool that you use to build um, Cloudflare workers. Typically, if you were to do this on the um, client side, you have to make HTTP requests from one micro front end to another, which in the long run can also cause like performance overhead. So um, let me show you the demo quickly. I just need to try to get this, okay. So the first demo I would show you is using the um, fragment architecture. Now, this is a cloud gallery that lists like several different pictures. And I'm going to go over to, to show you actually how they are being you know, pieced together. So you have the header fragments, the body fragments. Inside the body fragments, you have a filter and a gallery. Now the interesting bit is they all work independent of um, each other. So you can easily go to the gallery fragments. Ev everything there works. Um, if I try to search for, let's say, cloud, Cloudy, that's the word. You can see that the filter works and uh, the gallery is also working all together. If I, I isolate the body components and also try to do the same thing, um, dark. From a second spell, dark. You see that everything is working like as separate workers, right? So an idea here is how does this actually perform if you want to move, if you want to adopt this in an already existing application because all of this was built from scratch, right? But nobody really wants to like start off, like after this talk you're like, oh this is nice, let me go and implement it in my application, but do I want to rewrite everything? Not necessarily. So we also have like thought about this and came up with another interesting um, architecture called Fragment Piercing that allows you to incrementally adopt all of what I just showed you inside of your already existing application. So um, looking at the previous monolith front end that I showed you where the front end piece is all um, pieced together as a single unit, what will happen if you were to incrementally adopt your uh, micro front end is you'd have some part of the application be like a legacy app where if you're typically using React, it's still um, a React app and then you can incrementally adopt. So maybe you have a component, an e-commerce um, application in this case, maybe you have a checkout component or a login component. You can then um, write that in a worker and deploy that, but it's possible to have them all working together. And that is, um, due to the fragment piercing architecture, essentially what this does is it combines the HTML done taken from your legacy application with the HTML done taken from the uh, micro front ends and piece them together. So the example code that I have there is an actual React app where the login um, component is a worker that is separate and we're actually going to here we're actually putting them together using the fragment, um, piercing fragment host component. So this is an architectural diagram showing you how this works. Um, like I said, legacy app is already existing. How do you like start adopting this in your code base? So this example is actually using several different components. I really enjoyed Miss Cole um, talk earlier about quick everything that I've been showing here from the previous um, fragment architecture is built using Quick. And interestingly enough, if you have like a React application that is a legacy app, it's possible for you to incrementally adopt workers. 
Each of the other fragments that you see are individually built um, workers that are using several different frameworks. For example, the login is using Quick. Uh, the to-dos the to -dos is using React. And the great thing here is everything is combined using the piercing gateway where you stream, we stream um, the DOM elements coming from the fragments and also the ones coming from the legacy app and then deliver that to the user on the browser. So let me show you a quick demo of this in action as well. So we built this, let me just zoom it in so it's a bit visible. Okay, so we built this application that has React as the legacy app, and on top of that, we added different fragments, um, different component fragments um, built using Cloudflare workers. I'll show you uh, an example of why you would actually like, what, what's the benefit of this in the first place? So there is this um, button called Piercing Enabled, which essentially adds the piercing um, implementation, but I'll turn that off. And then I try to sign, sign in using my name. You won't see any difference right now. Everything loads and I'm logged in, right? But let me go back, um, log out, and then turn this on and increase the delay of the legacy app by maybe two seconds. And then I try to log in using gifts. You would notice that the fragment actually goes on to start working while the production suite is, okay, I've done this a couple of times already and it's already um, loaded in my browser, but usually you would notice like a lag between the productive, um, the header and the actual fragment. I can show you that inside of the actual components because I've not done anything in the news fragment, so let me try and see if that works. So if I increase the load here, it's maybe 10 seconds, and I refresh this page. So you can see that the actual fragment is already loaded to the DOM, it's server-side rendered, it's fast, while the actual legacy app takes a bit of time to actually come up on screen, right? So the same applies to all the other um, parts of this application, they are all like the to-do list, the news, the calendar, they are all fragments um, built on Cloudflare workers while the actual container of this application is a React app. All right, um, going back to my slides, what's the actual benefit of using these um, examples that I just showed you, like why would you go on to adopt it? I think the first one is encapsulation. It's very interesting because you can see the examples from the examples how you are able to like incrementally adopt micro front ends in your application. It's one thing to see this and be like, oh, this is nice, let me try to do it. And you have already like a, a large legacy application and you want to start um, in integrating it and you feel like, oh, this is not possible. Maybe we should do it some other time. But yeah, using Cloudflare workers as isolated components actually helps you like, start from somewhere so it doesn't feel like it's a huge tax and you, you're not able to um, achieve it. Another benefit of using micro front ends on the edge is, of course, you get better performance. All of these are server-side rendered. It's fast. You can also get good core web vital scores from having to ship um, server-side rendered code. Um, another example that I would say, oh, okay. The last two benefits is, of course, you have your fragments developed independently. So if we take this example and move it to like actual larger app, you can have separate teams working on each fragment while maybe you still have your legacy app, you still have people working on that. So in essence, it really helps you to, you know, start, um, it's, it's a very familiar route for you to take if you're trying to start using micro front ends. You can start small and build up from, from there. All right, um, all of this that I shared has been written like in blog post format. If you'd like to go and read them, I will share links to these slides in the next slide so that you can scan the QR code and get access to it, including the demos and the blog post. So. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, if you have any questions, you can come chat with me later.